Okay, moving on in our uh, discussion of the total Lagrangian formulation for this 1D uh, rod problem, I want to talk now about the boundary and the initial condition. So, uh, again, I think that it's probably uh, uh, obvious, but I'd like to still just uh, articulate it so that it's clear to everybody. So let's just uh, remind ourselves of what our, our um, in this particular example problem, what it looked like. We had a rod. Right, we had a rod that was fixed at one end, and it had some potentially varying cross section, right? Something like this. And we were interested in solving it on this axis. We we said everything was um, 1D. So this is going to be since we're in the total Lagrangian form, this will just be our x axis here. Uh, and then we had some a naught, which was a function of x, right? And, and in this case, we're going to go ahead and say that there is some force on this surface, call it T, which is a function of time. Okay? So let's talk now about the boundary conditions of the problem. And, and really, there are going to be two types of boundary conditions. And I'm partly, partly doing this so that we become accustomed to the, the, the way that we describe boundary conditions. So the first type is if a displacement is prescribed, then that's a displacement boundary condition. And this displacement boundary condition is going to be said to be applied on uh, gamma u, okay? And gamma just denotes the boundary, and the subscript u says it's the boundary where we're prescribing a displacement, okay? In contrast, uh, if a displacement, or if rather a traction is prescribed, Right, then we have a traction boundary condition, and it's going to be applied on gamma sub t, right? So in this, in this case, I'll just say note, uh, gamma is just how we de denote the boundary of the part. Okay, so, so let's uh, sort of write it now more formally. So for our displacement boundary condition, we would say, that u is equal to u bar on gamma u, right? Where u bar is the prescribed displacement. Okay? And similarly, for a traction boundary condition, right, we would write that, um, I'm going to write how we would write it in 3D. Uh, I'll say n naught p is equal to tx naught bar. And I'll define those terms in just a second. Okay, this is the prescribed traction. Okay, what is n naught? n naught is the unit normal uh, of the surface that the traction is applied. Okay, and in uh, in a two or three D case, that's going to be a dot product, right? It's going to be a uh, n will be a vector dotted uh, uh, with a with this tensor quantity of the stress. In this case, n is just going to n naught is going to be a one if the surface direction is positive and negative one if it's negative. Okay, so uh, I'll just say for our one d case, uh, we'll say that uh, n naught equals one um, at and I'll say x b. If you remember, we defined x b as this location here. So this is x b, and we defined this as x a equals zero, right? And then here I'll say n naught is equal to negative one at x a. Okay. So how about for our uh, for for our problem in particular now? Okay. So for our problem, uh, we would say that that first boundary condition is u evaluated at x of a, which is going to be zero, and at time t for all time is zero, right? It's fixed at that left-hand boundary, okay? At the right hand, so this boundary condition says that um, I have n naught uh, times p of now x b of t, that uh, that's the, the traction term, is going to be equal to um, my force, which is, we said was t as a function of time, divided by the area there. So that's a naught evaluated at x of b. 
Okay, so remember here, uh, because this is, look up here, n naught equals one at x of b, this just goes to one, and so this uh, boundary condition becomes p x of b as a function of t is equal to t, a function of t divided by a naught evaluated at x of b. Okay, so let's collectively call these boundary conditions 29. Okay, something that you should note, I, I've said many times in lots of classes, you've probably heard it before, you can either apply attraction or displacement at a point, you cannot prescribe both at the same point. Okay, so that's important. Okay. Traction and displacement cannot be prescribed at the same point. Okay, so what that means, it doesn't mean that a point can't have both attraction and displacement, it means you can only control one or the other, you don't get to control both. Um, and so the sort of the corollary to that is that the uh, the total boundary is the the is the uh, traction boundary plus the displacement boundary, right? That's that contains the entire boundary. Okay, so that's boundary conditions. What about initial conditions? So we're trying to solve uh, the equations of motion. Equations of motion have a second order derivative in x and a second order derivative in time. And, and so that means that we need two boundary conditions and two initial conditions, okay? So here's our initial conditions, okay? So let's just say because the differential equation is second order in time, you need uh, two initial conditions, okay? So that, what's the first initial condition? Well, it's the displacement in the body at time t equals zero, and we'll just call that u naught. So oftentimes, uh, that is gonna be just zero, but in any event, this is the generic form. And the, the second term is what's, what is the time derivative of the displacement, or the, which is effectively is the velocity, also initially, right? And so we'll give, give that an initial velocity which will be as a function of x, okay? Okay, let's call this equ these collectively equations two, okay? Now, there's something that we don't often talk about in, in the um, solution of these differential equations, but it's important when we're talking about, you know, the uh, how uh, the stresses and displacements in a, in a continuum can evolve. So I wanna talk about the interior continuity conditions. And these kinds of things can, can creep up if you're modeling things like damage or cracks or something like that where, where you want to permit there to be a discontinuity, okay? So, but in the case of this 1D rod, okay, uh, the force has to satisfy the following and hopefully become clear in a second. The limit as epsilon goes to zero, and epsilon here is not a strain term, it's just a, it's a distance, right? Uh, of the quantity f of x plus epsilon minus f of x minus epsilon, that term must be zero, right? Let's call that equation three. So what this states, the above states the following, uh, that the force has no discontinuities. Okay, and we refer to this as a jump condition. And so we can formally write this jump condition as follows. It looks something like this with like a bracket with a double bar on it, okay? It says that the jump condition on f of x uh, is equal to zero. So this, these brackets, that denotes a jump condition. Okay, we'll call that equation four. So in our case, we can similarly write the following. Uh, so for this case, we can write, uh, write our force term is p times a naught, right, uh, is equal to zero. That's, that's our uh, interior continuity condition. I wanna make a, a final comment about how we uh, denote con uh, continuity. So I'll just say here, this is a definition. So we define uh, the continuity of a function as follows, right? We say that 
a function uh, is what we'll call C n with the n in the superscript a function is cn if uh, the nth derivative uh, is a continuous function right so for example right a c0 function uh, is only continuous uh, in the function itself right its derivatives are only at most piecewise continuous Okay, a couple other things. The derivative of a cn function uh, is a cn minus 1 function. Okay, and the integral of a cn function uh, is a cn plus 1 function. And uh, something I'll note uh, also is that we can sometimes say a, a c minus 1 a function right is, is a function that's not continuous okay but uh, is still assumed uh, to be differentiable between the points of discontinuity okay so I think that completes all that we need to know about the the problem setup the the um, equations we're trying to solve the constitutive laws and now the boundary conditions so now we're ready to um, to sort of move on to developing uh, an approximate solution. So th think about getting a weak form for the total Lagrangian. That's going to be the topic as we move forward.